Well, hello there, this is Tamil, and today I wanted to talk about how to draw or paint hair and just like general tips about it. And there's a, a lot, a lot to cover, so let's just get started without further ado. Um, there's also a, a written article on this if uh, you just want to see the pictures more and you want to like read like a, f like a brief description of what I'm talking about here, uh, then go ahead, find it in the links. And uh, so the first thing I would say is um, hairline, like think about a hairline. So if you draw a face, draw a skull, whatever it might be, um, just think about uh, where the hair might start and where the hair might end. So obviously we have eyebrows, a little bit of mustache, beard, and like the rest of the hair. Not all hair is growing with the same density. So for example, uh, where the beard uh, starts on your cheek, uh, most of the time that's not really very harsh line compared to your top, like top of your head, of your skull, because that right there, the hair starts like almost immediately. I even though there's some blending uh, compared to the beard, uh, there's gonna be patchy beard, small beard, you know, uh, things like that. Um, and also uh, a little bit above the eye to the right, um, you can find a small, small uh, angle that is also transitional hair it's not really sharp and that's what I want you to keep in mind when you just uh, going to start uh, drawing hair and practicing it and also uh, if you look at uh, the, the ear right uh, there's also a small circle around the ear where the hair is not going to be grown there's like a small area that it's uh, the hair basically doesn't grow right next to the ear there's small 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 gap that is really not like important because uh, if the person has long hair or the angle of the character of the face is like different you're not really gonna see it that much and it's not like a big deal but if um, they shaved like really short then you can see definitely that circle that ring around it also another thing if you look at the end uh, slide for this one uh, you can see that there's like a purple part at the top um, that's where the hair flow kind of changes um, and I'll talk about hair flow in a bit but basically that's uh, another line that is going to be uh, not really prominent but you can definitely uh, you know exaggerate it on some haircuts um, especially for people like men they have like they pull up the top part and they cut everything else past that line and uh, it's a pretty popular haircut as well so if you want to keep that in mind, I think that's going to help to develop a little bit transition into uh, your character. And so another thing is uh, obviously hair flow. So that's where uh, how the hair grows and how does it fall on the head that's going to help you understand uh, how to work with it. So if you think about hair flow, just basically think about it as um, the hair glow go goes up and uh, then fold down because of the gravity, right? And uh, for some people, there's a, like a very distinct in the middle, that's where the hair starts growing. And it's not really like for everybody, like for example, for me, um, it's uh, if I grow my hair long enough, it's going to start splitting in the middle on its own. Like if I don't take care of it, it's definitely gonna be there. For some other people, you know, it's, uh, you can actually just comb it like that and, you know, exaggerate it. And you can just uh, think about it as an imaginary line. So for example, if, if the person has like a very, very uh, short hair, it's not really gonna be that prominent or uh, you can't really see it. So just uh, think about that. And uh, also I was talking a bit before, like the purple line from the previous slide, that's where the hair flow is going to be changing just a bit. So uh, if at the top, like the purple part is, um, very, very um, prominently going downwards. Um, the sides, they're kind of like, uh, sometimes they're like a little bit to the back or at like a less less extreme angle. And uh, also keep in mind, there's a hair whirl uh, at the very back. So you can probably uh, spot it if you like just put your finger behind uh, your head and just find where the hair starts growing. That's where the hair is going to uh, kind of whirl around that small part. It's not really as prominent and if you're doing simplified characters It doesn't really you know matter as much, but you can definitely 
feel it if you touch it. And uh, some people have it counterclockwise, some people have it uh, clockwise. Um, it's really, really just a um, just small feature that, you know, just brings just a little bit more realism uh, to your characters. So let's get into like uh, mythology, I guess, of how to approach hair. On the simple terms, I uh, can tell you a lot of things, but uh, let's just start with super simple stuff. So first of all, uh, you should start drawing outlines and uh, don't focus on painting or you know rendering. Just focus on the outline. Just sketch it. So first of all, uh, during sketch, you know, pick a brush that is not ink, not a uh, pen that is like doesn't have hard edge. Something transparent, maybe a little bit blurry, just a tiny bit. Uh, basically, like a pencil. Something that will uh, not give you. Like, it'll give you enough room to make small mistakes and just being, you know, fi like it's a like figure, figure drawing. It's just like a little bit gestural, a little bit um, not into details. So second, second thing, um, when you draw, try to obviously find a reference, you know, find a good reference where a person put effort in their hair. If you look at Hollywood um, stars and celebrities, you can look at their, you know, they put effort into getting their hair done. But at the same time, uh, if you look at those pictures, they, they have like a very bright flash because the, the light is coming from everywhere. Um, so just find light conditions that are like very harsh and it's easy to see where the shape of the hair is. Um, but we're getting a little bit sidetracked. So uh, simple, simple uh, sketching. Uh, don't focus on details. Find the outline of hair find big big shapes don't find like clumps of hair don't focus on the details at all um, also for the face uh, don't do complicated faces don't really focus on the face I would even just say put like two circles or like a, just like a stick figure if anything like just like something so like something enough so you can understand how the skull uh, is rotated in 3d space so something that is you know, um, like an actual skull that you can draw on top with, but also not something too complicated that you can get uh, carried away. So don't focus on the face, you know, focus on the hair. Don't try to do something complicated right away and uh, just have fun with it. Just like have like a bunch of them. Don't focus on like one or, or two of them. Just like make like 10 or 20 you know, every every single one, like maybe five minutes, ten minutes, nothing like crazy, really uh, focused. I would just get gestural with it, and so think about that, and also follow the hair flow. So if you find a chunk of hair, there's definitely gonna be uh, like a part where it's like, oh, where, that's where it's growing from, and that's where it ends, and in between you can find a U shape or like S curve or whatever uh, like curvy stuff that you can find that's in between. That's that's what's going uh, to give you the hair flow of it. So don't add too much of it. Um, I would even say make the brush bigger and then draw uh, into that as you go. And also you can just get like a big brush and just shade some parts, just like, uh, like if there's like a big chunk of hair laying down on another chunk of hair probably at the bottom there's gonna be like a very harsh uh, small shade um shadow just do that you know you like you outline it like a little bit better a little bit more thick and to just show volume and uh, form and uh, as a very last thing that you want if you want like improve your sketching just like find like uh, don't focus on like the mid-tones or whatever just like find like a very core shadows and then put like small highlights just like oh there's like a big highlight right here like two or three don't um don't don't try to draw every hair that's like a very very uh last step so pretty much i use this method for practicing like a lot especially in this tutorial so just like uh, find the silhouette find the lines um draw the skull first so that you can see how the hair lands and then after that you can just uh, draw um, hair clumps, like find big, big chunks. And so also another thing, um, you can find yourself, um, if you're using small, small hair parts, a small brush, 
or inking, um, it's also good to try that out, you know, that technique and not just like transparent ones. You can find yourself uh, with this tiny, tiny S curve. So like three lines and the three stroke technique. So if you just do like three strokes uh, that are follow each other and each one is a little bit shorter or a little bit longer than the other one, that's uh, going to give you like a literally really cool results. There's like this one um, drawing with the guy with the beard. I think I, I think I managed to do that one like really, really well. And uh, also, if you look at the same one, um, person with the beard, uh, I add more, uh, I add more uh, lines where there's shadows. So, for example, where the hair starts, or where the bun ends, or the bottom of the beard. You know, there's like a little bit more that I put, I put in so that it's like more, more active in that area. More, you can see the, you know, because the light hits. Um, the hair anyway and there's gonna be some parts that are like very highlighted and maybe I'm just like too lazy to put the highlight maybe I just like I put everywhere else more shade and uh, that's that's empty area that's the highlight so you can definitely uh, just use it like that and uh, just have fun with it uh, try to get the flow of it don't try to draw every single uh, detail um, I would just try to do that if I were you and there's also, you know, different types of hair, and I'm pretty sure I missed like like a bazillion of them, but it's just like a general, uh, something to think about. Like uh, basically everything that I'm telling you today is just like just something to think about before you start. So think about what kind of hair your character is going to have. So I drew the same face and I drew different types of hair. And, uh, you know, the first one that is definitely, it's like straight hair. And straight hair is very... It's kind of uh, not my favorite, honestly. It's like very hard um, to find where the shape is because it's very because it's straight and there's barely any air between it. So, so a lot of times, if the hair is very well brushed, you know, if you if the uh, person was brushing their hair for like an, an hour, uh, it's very like together. And so because it's together, it doesn't really give you much form to play with. It's going to give you uh, like around the skull, like really, really tight. And uh, that part is like pretty hard to draw. And you only see form where if it hits something, if it hits the shoulder and it goes around the shoulder, you can see. But in most cases, it's, it's uh, pretty, you know, pretty hard to find. Uh, the next one is wavy. I think the wavy one is kind of uh, kind of like the best. Uh, in between, between curly and straight, because wavy is, um, it's not too much details, but it's still like, it, it cut, it gets caught in the middle of between the hairs, like it, there's like chunks that like stuck with each other. And that's where like the air is gonna be trapped and that's where uh, it's going to give you form and that's where you can follow the hair flow. And uh, I think that one is like really, if you wanna start practicing something easy, I would definitely go for wavy hair. And then um, there's curly hair. And uh, curly hair is very, very, I think it's very complicated because it has um, so many like little small uh, curly things to the point where uh, it's kind of like painting a tree. Uh, like there's so many leaves on the tree that it's, it's you have to really think about it and simplify it and like to the best uh, abilities. And when you're, if you're painting with paint, um, maybe you can get away with different like big shapes, but if you're drawing it, that's uh, like a completely, you know, a uh, completely different thing. So if you want to challenge yourself, uh, go for curly, like really curly hair and try to draw it, but I don't recommend doing that if you're starting out. Uh, so there's also dreads. Um, I really like drawing them because uh, they're like basically it's easy to find where it starts and where it ends because they're very thick and they're tubular and so tubular hair kind of like um it's still hair and also it doesn't um because it's uh kind of like consisted of small small um uh, hair strands it doesn't reflect a lot so there's not much um big big highlights so you literally just think about oh there's like you know there's a giant tube right here and it goes together and you can just play around with that it's very uh very cool to start with uh spatial 
um, thinking and also there's anime hair anime hair uh, makes no sense to me <laughs> I don't know how uh, what rules are they following but it's definitely like um, really fun to draw because uh, you can get away with a lot of things if um, you know you don't have like a lot of practice with it because anime hair is kind of like so stylized to the point where um, if you just draw like a very good line quality and you know where the hair is going you probably gonna be fine and a uh, big big thing for anime hair is uh, uh, a lot of triangles and a lot of like long long uh, confident strokes because most of the anime obviously came from like the the old school manga and manga was made on ink and ink is very unforgiving if you do many many um like basically a, 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 like a good artist would really really try to get two or three good lines to show entire hair instead of sitting there and trying to do like 50 different strokes that you know if from page to page you know it's gonna take forever um so just think about big big shapes confident line uh puffy and thick hair is pretty close to wavy but um there's like a, this very different type of uh, puffy hair that is a uh, it's easy to sp like it's easy to find the difference between wavy and puffy if you if you look at two pictures together and um, definitely try to do wavy and, and thick and puffy if you're you know looking for good references and uh, that's there's a lot more so please uh, let me know if there are any different uh, hair types that you have missed that you're like that one is totally like uh, like a separate category because I didn't uh, I couldn't really c categorize hair uh, as much as I wish because there's uh, not that, uh, you know, not like 20 of them, you know, and I feel like this is like a good start. So um, I hope that helped as well. Another part is obviously you should try to paint hair. And uh, the way I did it, uh, I started with a small hair chunk. So I didn't even put it on the the skull i just found the picture and i found like a small shape i'm like okay i'll draw it separately from everything else so i would recommend doing the same just find a big big prominent hair shape that you want to draw and uh, then go ahead and draw it and paint it so um, the process is pretty pretty um simple um in general terms obviously it's not like a um, you first sketch, you just find like big, big shapes and try to think about it as a, like a 3D form. Don't think about it like, um, a lot of hairs. Just think about it like a simplified tube and, uh, just draw, uh, the tube and the big shapes and, uh, connect it together and find where, um, try to divide it into two or three sections. So like a kind of like a triangle in perspective, like a... Um, yeah, I guess my, my drawing just makes more sense than I'm talking, but uh, sketch it, you know, and then you ink it, so line, uh, to, to find where the, the edges are. Um, and then after that, you can just go ahead and drop three or four colors so that you can see the main, main uh, shapes for it. So like, oh, this is uh, the midtone, this is the shadow is going to be, this is like normal stuff. Um, and then after that, I usually use clipping mask. Clipping mask is a um, pretty popular technique. If you never heard of it, it's just basically a um, really quick tutorial. I, I've made this tutorial many times in my previous videos, but basically you make a layer, you do, I uh, believe, uh, control shift G or control um, alt G, and it's going to show you like a little red line and it's going to connect to the bottom part. So fill in that shape and now it's you're going to paint, it's not going to go outside of that shape. So do that and uh, after that I just got, um, got ahead and I got an overlay and I got an airbrush and I just drew, drew um, the tubes uh, in more prominent shapes. So I, I made sure where the shadow is going to hit it, where the other stuff is going to hit it. And once you have a general like you detail it as much as you could with the airbrush. That's where I usually just flatten it all together. And then I just uh, try to do uh, medium hair strands, medium sized brush. Uh, and I just want to make sure that you use just uh, something hard enough so you can leave like a prominent mark. 
but also something uh, like a watercolor brush that can blend in some colors together because there's definitely um, it's easier to blend in stuff uh, without uh, too much work so basically uh, smush it together after airbrush and then just paint away that's it that's uh, there's no secret to it just try to find big shapes try to follow the line try to think where the light is going to hit it and then at the very very end you can go ahead and use curves just uh, s uh, like a simple s curve to import like uh, improve the shadows and the color and then if you really want you can go ahead with the overlay or color dodge go ahead and just with an airbrush splash it where the highlights are going to be so um, nothing really too complicated and it's honestly just all about practice and trying to see the shapes and all that and just like looking for a good reference to like find a reference that has you know dark spots mid-tone spots and very very good highlights that you can see and don't don't focus on the, the face too much um, and uh, hopefully that was helpful too and uh, last but not least I mean it's not even last but uh, there's definitely an anime render and um, pretty much the same thing, you know, uh, line, you know, fill it in, add highlights and stuff like that. But for anime hair in general, I think there's definitely a lot less um, shadows. So there's basically uh, because anime was based on the animation, the, it's like cell shade, a lot of cell shading, most of it, not like all anime is like that, but there's a lot of cell shading. So think about like um, the one tone, then put a multiply on it and or overlay, and then uh, two or three dabs of highlights, and then you just all blend it in together. And um, the main focus here is definitely the line. You you should focus on the line the most. Make something that looks good with the line, and uh, I would say that using no pressure sensitivity. Uh, might be a good idea might be not depends on your workflow but i would definitely for this one use even thinner one like the one that i have even thinner than that then i would just paint um below it and then i keep drawing on top and blending the colors together depends on the style you're going for but mm, that's the general idea for it and uh, there's also western you know comic style hair that is pretty um i feel like that one is like a little bit closer to what i like to do is um very like heavy line dependent and um there's a lot of big big hair clumps and think about um like little triangular shapes that are, uh, usually happen where there's a lot of highlight or there's a very very big shadow so if you want to practice that like look for very very contrast hair and just think about um you know you can even go ahead and like pick up like a comic book and see how they do the hair i think the main part here is uh less is more you know inking uh is great and focus on the highlights but nothing more than that don't try to uh paint below it it's like um not that you can't do it it's just a very it's out of style in most cases not like all the time some people have like amazing rendering under uh line so basically uh ink it very well and uh, think about the 3d shape and 3d form for the hair there's uh, definitely uh that is important part of the comic book stuff and um the next thing is drawing braids and uh, drawing braids uh, it's kind of uh, it's hard to explain it unless you've seen it in life and definitely just like look at references but all i can say is it's kind of like a small tube that intervenes with each other so again it's just a, a 3d shape and uh, where in the middle that's where it's going to have the most highlight and where it meets like where the the braid meets together and intervenes that's where it's going to be have like a lot of shadow and uh, for the pattern, I can tell you that um, it's pretty uh, confusing sometimes, but if you look at it really closely, it's actually just uh, cubes and uh, each one, uh, if you half it, you know, you, if you uh, do a couple of lines and you half each line, that's where it's going to meet another uh, 
the, the braid part and um, just keep looking at pictures and look at my diagram and maybe um, that will help you understand how to do braids and it's not like a it's it seems complicated but if you just keep doing it and uh, try to do to um, make it into smaller shapes and like more simplified it's definitely gonna help you out it's kind of like drawing like chains um except chains like obviously have different shape but um uh, this kind of like um the same method i would say so just keep that in mind um don't get discouraged and just uh keep doing it honestly that's uh, that's all i can say and oh boy there's uh the common hairstyle section it's um it's a tricky one because there's so many hairstyles to the point where i don't even know uh, which ones are more important or which ones are, you know, to cover them or not. So, um, first of all, I can't cover all of them, but let's go in and uh, find a hairstyle for, for guys, for boys. Um, you can categorize them by thinking about which part is short and which part is long. So, a lot of times the top part uh, is long and the sides are usually shaved and uh whatever you do with the top that depends on the type of haircut sometimes they have the swoosh that looks like like a little wave uh those are fun to draw a lot uh some people people have like those the, the one side emo thing uh you know i used to have that that was fun and those are good you know they it, it comes into like a clump of hair and you can find the line where it starts that is also very beneficial and uh, some people have it split in the middle, you know, the old school style hair. That one is pretty fun too. And um, uh, all I can say is because uh, the hair is short for guys and because it's not very like volume, there's not a lot of volume, it's a little bit hard to draw. Um, it's, it's hard to paint, definitely. Drawing, I feel like it's a little bit easier. Um, so try to not um, focus on the details too much and try to find like big shapes uh, even though it's it's definitely it's definitely a challenge to do so and uh, the next uh, is uh, common haircuts for girls and I feel like I I if, if I would list every one that would be more than 50 probably because I, I have no clue because I, I was I was researching there's so many different cool ones but uh, I think I just um, I, I like narrowed it down to having very very short hair like uh, as if it's um, you know like a, it's a little bit like a guy haircut but more fluffy and more uh, combed uh, together that's a pixie haircut from what I know so if you want to look that up uh, pixie haircut that's going to be like a keyword and uh, I feel like knowing the haircut name is going to give you like better references so keep that in mind and the next one is uh, medium medium hair and um it's uh i believe it's called uh, bob cut and um it's pretty um pretty common it's very easy to draw to because it's kind of ending mid-air and it doesn't touch shoulders but it, it has volume to it so then you don't have to worry about you know the shoulders and it covers the ears and a lot of times the neck so you like i struggle with the neck connection if you if you have the same you know problem you can just like make the hair like a little bit longer and just like put it to the front and you're like i don't know where the neck is you know uh don't do that <laughs> for practice don't do that but if you're really like if you're starting out uh, you can you know do that a little bit not too much but uh next one is long hair so that one is um I think it's fun to try it and draw it, but uh, keep in mind that it's going to give you not a lot of big, big uh, shapes, but there's definitely some clumps of hair that are together and it's like pretty interesting, especially if like the model or the person who had the long hair definitely had like a special, the floof right before the, the, the image was taken. And uh, the next is a uh, bun and or buns uh, on sides. It depends uh, where you can put it. It's very uh, cool to draw those because um, there's like, first of all, you can put things in it. You can put sticks, you can put forks, you can put like anything in it. As, as long as it's uh, goes in there, uh, it fits, it goes, you know, it's uh, it's right there. And it's fun to draw. You can uh, decorate it, and there are different styles for it. And uh, buns could be small; they could be big. 
and they're really they're relatively easy to draw too because it's just a big uh, hair ball that is everything else is going inside of it so the rest of the hair is going to be inside going towards that so you don't really have to find the hair flow uh, you can just follow where the bun is going and just think about it like a bigger uh, 3d shape for that so a lot of times uh, there's also like a small small hair strand in the front or two uh, where you have the bun uh, those are like really really cute i think um, if you want to add to your character that small trait i think it's uh, really really awesome and uh, the next thing is thumbnail exercise and uh, that one is kind of weird but i <laughs> it's not like a common exercise so if it's not working out for you, then that's fine. But for me, it worked out pretty interesting because um, I did a challenge for th small, small lumps landscapes. And uh, the whole point is you draw like a landscape at the very, very small size. And um, I think doing the same for the hair also helped me try out like painting hair because you don't have to worry about hair flow or details or face or nothing else. You just focus on big reflections big shapes and uh, get your brush as big as possible and get your canvas as small as possible and try to draw it or paint it uh, to the best of your ability you know find a really um finding a good reference for this is like super important because um you want to find something that has like a diverse uh light condition so for one of them is like red blue and green and that's where i can see the reflections and everything if it's just a sunny day uh, picture it's really hard to find like a good um, reflection and variety in the hair so uh, try to do that if you want to practice uh, hair coloring uh, without too much uh, you know effort and uh, don't focus on the details keep it small and uh, hope uh, that exercise will help you and lastly, this is the final, final uh, section, I think. Um, I just did two portraits where I was very, very heavily focusing on the hair. I didn't focus much on the face. And uh, I think that's, a, that's like a best uh, solution here. You just focus on the, the face, don't focus on anything else. And um, the, the, the flow and the work is pretty much uh, very similar to what I did before. You start with a sketch, uh, you start with like a very rough transparent sketch, uh, follow the hair flow, uh, mark where uh, big big um, dark shadows are going to be, and then just fill it with the basic color, you know, behind it, be behind the line, and um, after that I really think about where um, the hair is looking like where the light is coming from and I got like a big 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 airbrush and they just keep doing hairbrush and my favorite technique is uh, You do a stroke um, You make that brush a little bit smaller, maybe two size five size smaller uh, Do it again, and I just do it very quickly just like small 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 and I do each brush and that's how I was able to get these uh, small orange highlights for um, the hair so if you're struggling with that that's how I did it and uh, that's where I'm going to like put the like merge it all together and then I just draw with a watercolor brush and then I just draw uh, like small highlights and usually it's a very specific shape uh, if you look very close um, it's kind of like um, uh, the way you shade it is across the hair and don't um, uh, it's like a ribbon, you know, and uh, just draw that and get an eraser and then you just do like a little dip. It's like an S-curve, like a bottom S-curve and uh, try to do that for the highlights. Then it looks like a little bit better. Sometimes it's like a zigzag highlight, you know, that works too. But overall, that's what I would recommend on doing. And uh, lastly, you can add small hair strands coming out like very very tiny ones uh, coming out from different parts of the hair so to add a little bit to the silhouette and uh, also uh, at the very end i added a uh, rim light uh, like just a simple simple white rim light to, to shade it so that you can see uh, where the you know where the hair clumps are going to be so you can like 
um, maybe add a little bit of volume to it. And then I did the guy as well. Um, and that one was like very, very challenging to me because I, I think I was very caught up on how I didn't catch his face um, color and how shadows laid on his face. So it felt like a little bit weird finishing it up. But, uh, you know, same process, uh, big shapes, uh, try to think on the uh, situations and like the, the shadows usually more saturated. But um, keep in mind that if it's like, depending on the type of hair. So for example, for the orange girl, it was uh, kind of like uh, a dark, dark deep red uh, shadows. But for the top like highlights, it's kind of like a little bit yellow, a little bit uh, purple. Um, so hue variation is very important. It's probably like the best and most important part about uh, painting hair. Uh, right after like the big big chunks of hair so keep that in mind and uh, a lot of times it's uh, you know if the person has their hair dyed that makes it even more complicated so uh, start out simple uh, focus on big shapes and keep drawing and uh, figuring that out and uh, use rim light that one just it makes everything <laughs> rim light makes everything perfect uh, but don't get carried away too much with it so I hope this uh, was helpful this is a very different type of video uh, because I really, really uh, wanted to share knowledge about this because I was really, uh, you know, I wrote the article, did everything I... So this is kind of like a little bit long video and uh, also a lot of uh, time lapses. And uh, I hope this was uh, like a lot more helpful compared to what I usually do. And, um, uh, you know, leave a like, uh, subscribe if you want. Uh, let me know uh, what you think and uh, if it helped you. If I skipped anything, I'll maybe make a part two someday. Uh, definitely not as soon, but uh, thank you for watching and uh, happy painting.